with the law as well as with the real estate office. And why can't they do something about as long as we stayed in that apartment and almost until winter was over without heat, last summer without air conditioning, rats, roaches, Look at the ceilings. Look at the whole place in there. Hole in the window been in there over a year. And the winter before last, we had a whole window paint almost out with icicles in the house. Did, did we do anything? Could we do it? We wrote to seven on your side, so maybe that's one reason why they are so hard on us, because we are behind. How in the world do you think I feel? And how do you think? It makes me feel, what is the law for? Equal justice under law. These are the words etched above the entrance to the United States Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. It is one of our country's most firmly embedded legal principles. But all too often, this ideal eludes many Americans because they lack access to even the lowest levels of our court system. My daughter had um, was pressing charges against me and she said that I had hit her and I had not hit her I was just trying to get her off of me but there were some other things that was going on with her as well so she was a bit angry with me and everything so she was trying to get me in some trouble. I belong to a co-op in Washington DC and they had canceled my membership and I tried to pay my co-op fees and they refused my payment. They claimed they had sent me notification that, they, that the board had decided to revoke my membership, which was not true. So it was something that I wasn't familiar with and I mean, I knew I had rights, but I wasn't sure. The Small Claims Court, actually the Small Claims and Conciliation Branch of the D.C. Court of General Sessions, which is what it was known as back in those days, came into being um, through an act of Congress in 1938. And the idea was to improve the administration of justice in small civil cases and to improve the service of the municipal court to uh, people regardless of their income levels or ability to obtain representation. In the beginning, the court operated as Congress had intended. However, by the late 1960s, it had drastically veered off course. The court was more or less becoming a attorney court where the average person couldn't go in and um, litigate a case. A lot of the major law firm attorneys who were representing the corporations were in there. Um, it became a rollover process. The statistics were staggering. Surprisingly, less than 2% of defendants were represented by counsel, compared to 89% of plaintiffs. This lack of representation almost always resulted in injustice. In February of 1967, Judge Tim Murphy was a newly appointed judge on the D.C. Court of General Sessions, assigned to the Small Claims Court. In response to the abuses he witnessed, Judge Murphy wrote an article for the D.C. Bar Journal and in it suggested several remedies for the problems he found. One such recommendation was the use of third-year law students to assist people who could not afford a lawyer. With D.C. Attorney Peter Wolf at the helm, a task force comprised of the deans of the five Washington area law schools was formed to work on obtaining the necessary court rule changes to make Judge Murphy's vision a reality. But some of Judge Murphy's colleagues were not so easily convinced. Judge Murphy's original idea encountered some opposition. The court, the judges, were pretty much evenly divided for and against the idea, and court staff and attorneys were against it in the beginning. It was a very radical departure from anything that had happened before. Well, all students in court was not a new concept in the nation, but it was new to the District of Columbia. Uh, I had uh, some judges who were very skeptical or approached it from the point of view of, well, I worked hard to pass the bar and you're going to let these students um, represent people in court without having passed the bar? How, we, how would we discipline them? Fortunately, the dissenting voices were overshadowed by those who realized this was not an unusual idea. In fact, at the time, 13 states already had rules permitting law students to appear in court on behalf of persons unable to afford counsel. 
the United States District Court for the District of Columbia regulated the practice of law in the District of Columbia at the time. So we had to get uh, their permission. And then they wanted to know the views of the Board of Judges of the Court of General Sessions. We pulled out all the stops, wrote briefs for them, for both courts. Um, had uh, people like uh, uh, then Circuit Judge Warren Berger, uh, former dean of uh, uh, Harvard Law School, Erwin Griswold, Justice Tom Clark, and many, many other people and organizations and committees uh, support the concept. And all this was communicated to uh, both courts. Their efforts paid off. In March 1969, after two years of campaigning, the task force succeeded in convincing the D.C. Court of Appeals to adopt Rule 46-3, allowing specially trained and supervised third-year law students to appear as counsel for the area's low-income residents. Soon after, the District of Columbia Law Students in Court program enrolled its first class of students in the Civil Division and began representing clients in the Small Claims and Landlord-Tenant Courts. A criminal division was added in 1972, giving students the opportunity to defend indigents charged with criminal misdemeanors. Today, D.C. Law Students in Court is one of the oldest and most well-regarded clinical programs in Washington, D.C. Law Students in Court has been a petri dish where young lawyers are cultured and taught to think about public interest issues. We're trying to teach students that uh, each person is important and that uh, as litigators they have an ethical responsibility to do their best for every single client they have. And on top of that we want them to be, become good litigators. We care about our students and we care in an unusual way. We want our students to be the best. We want our students to take from, wait a second. <laughs> we want our students to take from law students in court an experience, an education, an ideal. I think the most exciting thing about being here at Law Students in Court is the uh, being part of the students' first cases, the, the cases that the, the first cases that they're going to represent somebody in, especially in a situation like we have here where the cases are, are, are real life situations with real people and they're very important, very close to their lives. And so that has a, an importance to it that is very exciting and I think that it's, it's wonderful to be able to be a part of a situation where the, um, you're really making a difference in, in somebody's life. Every day is exciting. Sort of, you never know what's going to happen every, from day to day, um, but you can. I mean, every every day you can count on seeing a bit of tragedy and heartache and ridiculousness. The excitement comes in knowing that you can actually change the lives of people if you, hopefully, if you do it right. My client truly believed in his innocence, and as such, I believed in his innocence as well. And we went through the trial; things were looking good, and then the jury came back and acquitted him. And I saw just how happy he was to see that something that he believed in, that his rights had been vindicated. Um, and I realized at that moment how important it is the work that we do. So you were sued, you didn't know you were being sued. Right, but the suit happened a long time When you time get an eviction notice or you get a notice that you're being sued, the terror that comes over your face is, is astounding for some people. Um, and then the sense of relief that they finally got an answer to the problem. That's the best thing. A judge knows that when a supervisor stands there with someone, with a student from DC Law Students in Court, they know that whoever that client is that gets assigned to that individual is getting a team. And they know they're getting a conscientious student who's going to work countless hours to help close that case in the best mode for that client. And we have the enthusiasm and the zeal that comes across, and that sort of, enthu that sort of uh, energy is infectious, and it, it comes in, and people recognize that, people see that whenever you're representing someone, and I think that's important. It, it creates happiness, it creates excitement. Judges, from what I've heard in my own experience, enjoy cases where they have law students because they see that passion and that excitement. 
But students and judges are not the only beneficiaries of this unique clinical program. Naturally, the community benefits as well. Each year, students from five ABA-approved law schools provide critical legal assistance to nearly 6,000 low-income residents and make over 500 court appearances, both hearings and trials. First of all, I walked through the door, I said, thank you, Jesus. I've heard clients say things to law students in court when I've been standing around, and you know that what they've experienced is, is, is change. They are worth something when law students in court represent them. One of the um, hardest moments was about three or four lever dinners ago, and I had to give an award to a client that didn't think that he was going to be able to get up in front of 200 people and give an acceptance speech. He simply got up and said, thank you, I love you. That is what DC Law Students in Court is all about. We love our clients, we love our students, and the community that we've helped loves us. Along with all of its triumphs, Law Students in Court has also experienced its share of tribulations. Law Students in Court has faced a lot of challenges over the years, and I think most of them have been financial because it's just not a simple matter to, I think, to keep this place running. In my tenure as the Board of Directors member, we were always trying to find money to pay the staff and always trying to make ends meet. We were borderline bankrupt a number of times, and it is uh, to be, uh, not to exaggerate at all, to say that the people who've worked over the years for this program qualify, in my book, as saints because they work for nothing. They are the, the Mother Teresas of the legal services world, and it's just remarkable how much they've gotten done for such a ridiculously low compensation. And it's a great statement of where their hearts are, and, and the city should love them for that. People should care about law students in court because in the years that it's been here, it's represented thousands of people and it's changed the lives of thousands of people. I think law students in court is the face of what can be done well and what should be done if anybody cares about people. They're extraordinary and so People should know that they can make such a difference if they support this program. The type of service that they gave me, I know I couldn't afford to pay for it. And I mean, they put a lot of time. They put a lot of time in with me, with my witnesses. Um, I just thank God for them. I really thank God for them because if they had not been there for me, I don't know where I may have been today. As I will show you. Since 1969, Law Students in Court has trained more than 2,500 law students, assisted more than 250,000 low-income people, and tried more than 10,000 cases, winning more than it has lost. She's like beating the girl that's done. They've chosen to represent people in what I think are extraordinarily vulnerable areas. They've chosen to represent people who are in risk of losing their homes or their liberty. And they've stayed with that for 40 years. And the message that they continually put out there is that poor people matter and their problems have to be dealt with. I guess when you think of sort of heroes and noble callings in life, you probably think of firemen, policemen, and I think that's a remarkable job. But you would have to necessarily include in that group uh, criminal defense lawyers who represent the poor. I really can't think of a more noble calling and laudable calling in life than representing people um, who are charged with crimes who no one in the world wants to represent. The program, after 40 years, is vibrant, it's strong, it always needs support, but it's a program that has taught a lot of students and has represented a lot of people. The service to the community and the, and the actual can-do spirit that allows law students to go in on their own initiative, really, and try cases in court to represent people. 
Um, and I think that if law students in court continues to focus on those things and continues to be the unique situation it is where the law students have the opportunity to do that, that that will guarantee its success going forward. And the Law Student in Court program helps people. It helps uh, tenants, it helps consumers, it helps uh, people navigate the treacherous waters of life. It does a great service to clients who would not normally get that type of representation. It serves a great need in the community, it serves a great need among um, uh, law students, and uh, it serves law firms and training great lawyers and, and all the other places where, uh, where they practice. Society is very fragile. The more we can do to minimize the impact, impact of destructive economic forces on the most people, the better we all are collectively. Law students in court really changed who I, who I was as a person and certainly who I was as a lawyer. Law students in court was one of the most important things that I did in law school. It gave me the training and experience to jump into my legal career in a way that was really important. They taught us how to be defense attorneys and that's, that's a pretty good gift. We made a huge difference for a lot of people, keeping a lot of, um, a lot of families in houses and getting a lot of families in public houses transferred to places that were better for them. In this country, we value somebody's liberty so much, they ought to have the best possible representation, and law students in court provides that representation. If you want to support DC Law Students in Court, I think that you should fill out your checkbooks, and give as generously as possible <laughs> because it's a really, really good program. There's something magical about DC law students in court. You can't help but care about this place.